This photo is of a commercial hatchery. There are millions and millions and millions of eggs produced in the United States every day by chickens. And the breeders, the parent stock, grandparent stock, great grandparent stock, the eggs are put in hatcheries to incubate. And this is the bird that produces eggs. It's the white leg on. It's the most common. There are brown birds. Uh, the U.S. is a white egg market. Uh, only, unless you live in New England, people that live in New England love brown eggs. Uh, you go to New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, you find more brown eggs than you find white eggs. But the rest of the U.S. Uh, uses white eggs. Uh, in the Midwest, where the production is highest in Iowa, Indiana, Pennsylvania, it's mostly a white egg market. But they put all these eggs from these breeders into these uh, uh, hatcheries. So how are these eggs produced by all these millions and millions of laying hens? At any one time in the U.S. for the past, I think, probably 10 years, we've at least able to maintain 250 million little birds. And those are just commercials producing eggs for, for, for you to eat. So there's a lot of chickens out there. So the reproductive system, very interesting. In birds, only the left side, the left ovary, is developed. They used to have two ovaries, right and left. But the right one became insignificant, and now when you open up birds, you see just a remnant of a right oviduct. And it can become cystic to the point where it gets really big and fills up the abdominal cavity. But you can put a needle into it and take out the fluid. But only the left side of all birds is highly developed. And the ovary is uh, kind of like, uh, the bird is born with all the eggs it can lay in its life. And these are like, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of small over. Of course, we have not seen any bird yet that can lay all those eggs. Right now, the top laying bird is probably producing about 350 eggs in, in, in a production cycle. And production cycle is usually 90 weeks. I'm talking about a commercial bird. So, and when you have backyard poultry, they don't lay as much as the birds in the commercial system because a lot of people don't use those commercial birds. Some do, but we still don't see the high uh, egg count. So the potential for chickens to lay a lot, lot, lot more eggs is still there. And the only way they've been able to do it is to decrease the age at which the first egg is laid. It used to be maybe at the beginning of commercial uh, Chicken production, it used to be 30 uh, weeks. It came down to 25 weeks, 20 weeks, and now there are birds that start laying at 16 weeks. I don't think they can get it any lower, but I wouldn't put it past the geneticists. They might get chickens starting to lay at 10 weeks of age. I don't know. The younger they are at the age they wish to start laying, the more eggs they can produce. So these are the ovaries. And it has these uh, follicles and the yolks. So the yolks mature um, as they are put into the oviduct. Then there's another one that matures. There's another one that goes down. Another one matures. So you have very, very tiny over when you open up uh, a bird. Uh, if they have started laying. If they have not started laying, all you see is this flat surface. It's really, very difficult to see. They are really, really tiny. But once they start laying, you see them in different stages of growth. So they are released based on some hormonal mechanism that I don't want to go into. Birds respond to hormones just like humans do. And so they release these eggs and it's caught by this structure called the infundibulum. It's like an umbrella. And it catches the yolk and gets it to start on, on its journey. So here, this is where fertilization occurs. If you're using a rooster, but if it's just commercial eggs, you don't need a rooster. You just need 
the female to just release the egg and that egg will be made. But if you are using a rooster and you're trying to get chicks, then this is where fertilization is going to occur. And uh, this is the same place where you have the terraza. Someone was just showing me something that looked white and curly. When you break open an egg, it's not a worm. It's this uh, 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 structure called the terraza. And uh, then uh, the outer yolk membrane is also formed here in the infant development. And then it's thrown into the magnum, the first part of the oviduct. It stays here for three hours, and this is where the egg white is formed around the yolk. But you also need calcium, sodium, and magnesium to form that egg white. But it's mainly protein, albumin. And then there's a narrow area after the magnum called the isthmus. It stays here for only one hour. And then you have the membrane, the inner or outer membrane form. Then at the isthmus also, there is stimulation of the body to produce more calcium to get ready to go and put the calcium in the next part of the oviduct. And that's called the uterus or shell gland. So here's an egg that's coming down into the uterus or shell gland, and it's going to spend at least 20 to 21 hours in there. That's where it spends most of its time. It takes a long time for that shell to be put on. But that shows you that a chicken can lay an egg a day. It's between 24 to 25 hours. All of this happens from the time the yolk is released until it has the shell put on and until the egg is laid. This is the place also where you have the pigments put on. If it's a brown chicken, it's going to put on the pigment. If it's an Easter egg, Aracana, Americana, this is where the pigments go on. White eggs don't have pigments. White eggs and brown eggs, the only difference is the pigment. Nutritionally, they're exactly the same, even though people think that brown eggs are healthier. And then it goes into this area called the vagina, near the cloaca. It stays here for just a minute or so. And then there's something called a cuticle or glue that's added to the egg. And that helps seal the pores of the egg so that there's no disease entry. Up to this stage, the egg is very sterile, but it's going to come out into this dirty environment. So there's that protective uh, part of the egg. And in many European countries, if you've traveled in, uh, in Europe, you notice that they just put the eggs on the shelf. They don't keep them cold, like we do here in the US. We are very litigious society. So these supermarkets, <laughs> the USDA came up with all these regulations about keeping eggs cold because people are so scared of getting sick. But in Europe, they don't wash their eggs. So if you don't wash the eggs, you're not taking this glue off. And it's a very protective layer. But also in Europe, they do a lot more salmonella testing than we do. Our salmonella testing used to be voluntary until the FDA came in and started the egg rule. So if you have anything more than 3,000 chickens, you have to test them for salmonella. But before then, it was a voluntary uh, program in many states. But in Europe, they consistently test for salmonella, and they know these birds don't have salmonella, and so they feel very comfortable leaving those, chick those eggs out uh, at room temperature. But here we don't do that. We wash our eggs, because people don't like to see poop on their egg when they buy them. And you can see that in Europe, when you buy the eggs, it's like they just came from the farm, with everything on it. You know, if you want to wash it, you go wash it at home. But here, the eggs are washed. Uh, I've seen the egg processing plants. They go in this warm, sudsy uh, material, and they have a little bit of maybe some chlorine or some other chemical in there, and they wash them, and they're nice and clean when you go to the supermarket to pick them up. But there's really no need to keep eggs in a refrigerator. But because they've lost that, they are more prone to have diseases go in. 
So when n leaves the cooler temperature, uh, when it leaves the body, it's warm. And so the cooler temperatures causes the inner and outer shell to separate, and that's what gives us the air cell at the tip of the head. So very, very wonderful uh, machine here, this uh, reproductive tract of the chicken. What equality, what do we mean? So these are the characteristics of an egg that influence its acceptability by both the producer and the consumer. So what do we look for when we talk about air quality? We're looking for the shell or external quality. We're looking at the internal quality, the albumin especially. And then we're looking at egg size. You notice that in here in the US, we mostly have uh, large, uh, medium-sized eggs. They're graded. The USDA has grades for the different sizes based on the weight. So these are automatically weighed while they're moving through the, um, uh, you have this uh, in, the ascent, in the plants where they process the eggs, they go through these machines that automatically grade them. So they put them in the different weight categories. So people don't like to eat very, very small eggs. So those are peewees. Those are thrown out. So they are insert specific size. We also don't like double yolks. Some people do. I mean, people that bake and so on, they like to double yolks. But they're very difficult to handle. So you don't want your chickens producing too many double yolks. So 2% of chicken eggs usually will have some type of defect in the shell. Sometimes you don't notice it, but sometimes they are very noticeable. And the shell quality is usually based on the strength of that shell. If you touch an egg and it breaks in your hand, that's not good. You want a very strong shell that you can knock on that won't break. The cleanliness of the shell, that's only in the United States. We are really concerned that there's no poop on the, chip, on the egg. The texture, the shape, and color. Those are all important. If you are going to buy a white egg, you want a white egg. You don't want an egg that looks like khaki. So there's a poster. You're going to get this uh, online uh, to look at later on. Uh, there's a poster uh, of all the eggshell defects, the most common ones, uh, by this company called Altec. So a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about you will see it on that poster. So we sometimes see shellless eggs. And why do we have shellless eggs? Sometimes because the shell gland is immature and cannot produce the calcium to put on the egg. We usually see this in very young birds when, when they start laying. Sometimes there's these immature eggs that come out without a shell. There are diseases that can cause the shell not to form because they affect the oviduct. And one of these is avian influenza, infectious bronchitis, and Newcastle disease. These are diseases I talked about before. There are all three respiratory diseases of chickens and cause respiratory signs, uh, coughing, sneezing, and so on, but they also affect the reproductive tract. And then you have the nutritional deficiencies. When you have a deficiency of calcium and phosphorus and vitamin D, you will not have a good shell forming. The shell of the egg is mainly made up of calcium and, and phosphorus. But you need vitamin D to get calcium to cross the cells. So vitamin D is always interacting with calcium, not just in chickens, but also in humans. And you see sometimes what we call the soft shell egg. It's an incomplete shell. And it can be caused by heat stress. Much, much older birds always have some defect in their egg, so it's good. If you are doing this for commercial purposes, don't keep your birds until they're three years old. In the commercial system, they keep them until they're about 90 weeks old. 
or sometimes 120 weeks old. But backyard poultry owners tend to keep their birds, unless they are pets. If you're keeping them to sell eggs, you might want to change them and bring in a younger flock. Excess phosphorus also can cause an incomplete shell. Uh, high salt content in your water can cause it, and also mycotoxins. Mycotoxins usually are in the feed. These are produced by different kinds of mold. So if you have moldy feed, you may have a, a, a soft shell egg. Now cracks. It's sometimes hard to see. It's very difficult actually to see here. But when you look at certain eggs, you can see like a very hairline, you know, very thin hairline crack. Uh, they are called, some of them are light cracks, star cracks, and very, very small cracks. This is usually due to nutritional deficiencies. If you don't have enough calcium, phosphorus, or vitamin D in your feed for your layers, they're going to have cracks in the eggshells. And the eggshells are very thin. You touch them and they break. So calcium nutrition is very, very important when you have chickens. Always a good idea to give additional calcium in the form of uh, oyster shell. What about dirty eggs and blood-stained eggs? Sometimes you see those. The dirty eggs, usually because the birds have diarrhea, and we talked about the causes of diarrhea, the main ones will be parasites, both the, the uh, roundworm parasites and the protozoan parasites like coccidia can cause uh, diarrhea. With blood, it's usually... Sometimes the eggs are too large and the birds prolapse and there's a lot of bleeding around the vent area. Sometimes it's because other birds are picking at the vent area. A lot of people that raise uh, poultry nowadays don't want the beaks to be trimmed. And if you're using commercial breeds, that's a disaster. Because these commercial breeds are so aggressive. If you leave their beaks on, they're going to attack each other. You're going to have a lot of cannibalism. Because when that egg is being laid, the vent looks so attractive. It's red, it's shiny. And they just come and start picking. And once they start picking and they see that blood, it attracts more of them. So you see eggs uh, covered with blood. Uh, we also see it in very young birds uh, that have prolapse. Uh, and sometimes if you have an abrupt change, in the way you are lighting these birds, the amount of light that you give them, you can have really big eggs that will cause a prolapse and bleeding in the vent area. How many of you have seen this kind of egg before that looks corrugated? <laughs> now, sometimes you just see one of them. If you see just one, it's okay, don't worry about it. But if you see many of them, then you have to start thinking, what is causing this? Newcastle disease and infectious bronchitis are two viruses that can cause what we call wrinkled eggs. They cause the oviduct to be dysfunctional, and then the shell is not put on properly. So this is all happening in the uterine uh, area of the, of the, of the oviduct. The uterus. It looks like the uterus movements is squishing the the shell so it's not put on properly. The shell gland especially is defective. If you have overcrowding of birds and they're stressed out, you tend to see a lot of these uh, wrinkled eggs. And the wrinkling can take many forms. Sometimes it's not too bad but sometimes it's very, very noticeable. Excessive use of antibiotics can also affect the shell gland. And in some birds, it seems it might be an inherited trait. You just see it in one particular bird, it keeps slaying wrinkled eggs over and over again. If you don't see it in the other birds, don't worry about it. Because then it's not an infectious disease or, or some mass shell gland defect. 
Sometimes you see what is called pimpling or pimple shells. This is a very severe one. Usually the pimpling is all around. I just went to a farm last week with one of my students and the birds were about 80 something weeks old and almost all the eggs had pimples. They were very rough. It was the age of the birds that was causing that. Because I looked at uh, his ration, uh, he's putting in enough calcium, but the older they get, the less they can metabolize that calcium. So those birds are basically spent hens, and the problem is just going to get worse. So you have this spotting, and they're deposited on the surface. This is a very severe one. <coughs> they can also be caused by excess phosphorus, and sometimes it's strain related. Some strains do it more than other strains. And then sometimes we have what is called calcium coated eggs, where you have the calcium first layer put on, and then another layer of calcium. And it tends to be put on on either end, and it causes a very funny looking uh, shape. So again, it would be because of a defective shell gland, poor nutrition, when you have too much calcium, and then maybe the bird was disturbed while the shell gland was being put on. Maybe someone walked in and the bird just skipped out of the nest and that caused the movement in the oviduct and some extra calcium to be de uh, deposited. <laughs> Sometimes you see pale eggs coming from brown birds. The intensity of the brown color is reduced, and that depends on the amount of pigment that's placed on the bird. So there are things that can cause less pigment to be placed on the egg. Infectious bronchitis, which is a virus, can do that. It can affect the oviduct to certain extent that the pigment process uh, is disturbed. Older birds, older brown birds, will tend to lay paler eggs because they're getting older, they're not producing as much pigment. Just general stress can affect egg production and egg quality. If you use certain kinds of drugs, sulfur drugs and nicabazine, which is a coccidious that, they can destroy the pigments in birds. Would you say older chickens that lay eggs have less nutritional value? You mean the, the nutritional egg? value of the egg? Mm -hmm. I would say yes. That's why they're replaced in the in the commercial industry. They're replaced at a certain age. You cannot you don't want to keep them unless you mold them. When you mold them, they lose all their feathers and they come back new. And they start laying again and then the egg uh, quality is the same or similar to a young bird. Very frequently anymore in the commercial industry. How can you make a bird more? You just don't feed it. You don't feed it. You what? They don't give you them don't any food. Them. You feed them. Artificial molting, you keep food away. You just give them water and they lose all their feathers within a few days. But it causes a lot of high mortality, so it's a, it's a humane issue, welfare issue. So they've stopped it, but the people that do it, they used to do it a lot in California. Uh, at the end, they were actually using feed, but feed with a very low level of nutrients. So it's basically, they were just feeding them like wheat or just something that was dense but without the nutrients that they need to have good egg production. So what you're trying to do is just stop them from producing eggs to have that rest. You don't want any protein in that feed because if you give them protein, they're going to lay eggs. So you don't want the protein and then they lose all their feathers. Feathers are all 85% uh, protein. And then you start feeding them again after a week of giving them that dense feed and they come back like new. It's basically like you're re, regenerating 
the chicken, I wish we could do that for humans. <laughs> Go through a molt. But if you have a, a backyard flock, mm -hmm. and you don't do artificial lighting. They should molt naturally. Oh yeah, yeah, fall. yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, forest molting. They usually do natural molting. Chickens molt naturally in the temperate zones, especially in the fall. They lose their feathers and get ready to rest for the winter. Regardless so of age. So they don't lay in the winter. Regardless of their age. Regardless of their age, but the older they get, the more the molting is stressful. It's very stressful for them. Molting is a very stressful yeah. uh, process. They, they are very painful when they lose those feathers. And they're losing a lot of protein, so you have to supplement them with some protein to help them out. Uh, but if you want your chickens to lay year-round, all you have to do is give them more light. The reason why they're molting is because the day length is changing. So there are all these hormonal changes telling them uh, that they need to conserve their energy, they need to conserve uh, during the winter months. Uh, they should not produce, because they're not going to have the feed. You know, this is like a very primitive type of chicken. Oh, I'm not going to have any food out there because it's going to be winter. So they're resting their body. But you can do artificial molting. If you take feed away from them, they will lose those feathers. But it's not practice anymore because it was a very big welfare issue in the poultry industry. And it used to be done a lot more in California uh, than in here. Uh, in the temperate zones, I didn't know many people that molted their chickens. But in California, they had this open-sided housing, they had cheap labor, and they thought they could reuse these chickens over and over and over again. And they will molt them, and they will live for like two, two and a half years. Where in other places, these chickens don't live for more than a year, and they're sent out as spent hands. If they do natural molting, mm -hmm. how long does it take for the feathers to regrow? It depends on the breed. It depends uh, on the chicken. It takes anywhere between three to 16 weeks. Yeah, some people get worried when they don't see the feathers growing back, but it depends on the breed. Some breeds take longer than other breeds. Some as short as three weeks, you will see the feathers growing back. They lose all the feathers on their body or just some of them? It depends. Some of them look naked. And some of them partial. You know, they lose some on the wings, they lose some on the back and around the neck. Uh, but some will lose a lot. They look really ugly when, they, <laughs> when they're molting. Naked chicken. So we sometimes have these pale eggs, like I talked about, you know, because uh, you might be using some coccidia starch that is destroying uh, those pigments. And then, I don't know, have you seen these lilac or pink eggs? I've seen them. Yeah. And uh, it can be caused by stress or excess calcium, and it's because there is an association between the cuticle and there's this extra uh, calcium layer. You usually see that uh, in brown, brown birds. Uh, anything that can stress chickens out, whether uh, parasites will cause changes uh, in the egg quality. I've seen a lot of these. Some of your eggs, Jennifer, look like this. These white or brown speckled eggs. Jennifer works as our program assistant at Cornell, but she's a chicken lover, and so I get all her complaints about chickens. And her eggs are delicious, her chicken eggs, I mean. Are delicious, uh, but I've seen some of them look like this. These are because uh, the chicken might be older, uh, there's a defective shell gland, uh, maybe excess calcium, or maybe when they were laying the egg, there was some disturbance. But it's mostly because of the uh, of uh, old age and a defective shell gland. Aren't there like speckled eggs for that's a breed? Um. I thought Sussex lay up sometimes, but it's not, it's not what they're supposed to lay. Yeah, I think they're speckled because of the speckle well, pattern. Well, someone's well, laid that? They, they do speckled. lay, they, they like do speckled some, lay, like. some of the old true breeds, like well summer, to lay speckled eggs. Is it speckled or is it just a pattern? It's because, a pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern because the true speckling, uh, it's kind of, those areas are kind of like a weaker, area of the of, of, of shell. Mm -hmm. 
But when my when my eggs have speckles, it's because it's it, it's weak. It's weak. It's because they're older hens. They're thin. Some of my older hens. Yeah. yeah. But I'm sure with those breeds, because we have a lot of these uh, heritage breeds that produce all kinds of different eggs, it could just be like a pattern and not the weakness of the shell itself. So mottled shells, uh, this is a failure of the shell to dry out uh, as quickly. And so you have, like, when you put it against a light, you see these uh, translucent areas. And that can be caused by manganese deficiency. We have these really uh, minute uh, micronutrients that are needed by poultry. Uh, manganese, zinc, and they need it in very small quantities. But when they're deficient, you will see it in either the eggs or for the case of zinc, you will see really poor feathering. If you don't have enough you know, zinc in a chicken diet, the feathers look really horrible, and they drop off, and then they look like they're breaking. So they're needed in tiny quantities, but very important. So make sure that your, uh, that's why I said to people, don't buy your feed, don't uh, make your own feed, go and buy it. Because there's everything in that feed, it's complete feed, it has all the vitamins, the minerals. So if you don't have enough manganese, you're going to have uh, uh, mottled shells. Uh, overcrowding can cause it, mycotoxins and other uh, disease agents.